Today we are going to start with the new chapter in physics that is refraction through a lens. Uh, earlier we already done the refraction through plane surfaces so you are already aware about what is the refraction and how the refraction takes place through the prism. So that part we already done earlier so now we are coming to the next part of the chapter that is refraction through a lens. So lens yeah the most easiest way to understand lens is your spectacles so those who are wearing spectacles they know that the, the spectacles they were wearing are nothing but the lens so lens are of different different nature so they are basically that particular transparent medium through which the light can pass through after refraction it is going to either uh, be lowered or we'll learn about that part so basically uh, we are familiar with the use of lenses in spectacles uh, we define lens as a lens is a transparent refracting medium bounded by either two spherical surfaces or one surface spherical and other plane so it will be such a kind of a, uh, of a kind of a, a glass body which will be having one end as spherical or both ends spherical or in the, could be this way also and one or could be that if both are not spherical then one is spherical other is flat so that, that this way the lens can be either having both the sides both the surf, surfaces so if this is a lens it could be that this is curved part this is also curved part or it could be that this is the flat part and this is the curved part. So depending upon uh, the whether it's having both the surfaces as curved or one as curved and other as uh, flat. So note the plane surface can be treated as a spherical surface of infinite radius of curvature. So you can see that if we take a plane surface, we can consider the plane surface also a particular kind of a curved surface which was having a radius of curvature is infinite that's why if you make a very big circle then if you take a part of it it will almost look like a straight line anyway not to take uh, into consideration these things it you should not get confused with such small things which are not at all important so accordingly we have got two kinds of lenses first one is the convex lens Another one is concave lens. The convex lens is also called as converging lens and this is called as a diverging lens. So a lens which is going to converge means coming all the points coming to a point so if the ray of light are such that they are meeting at a point after a refraction there is a converging kind of a lens and if it is going away okay that is a diverging kind of a lens so first conve convex or converging lens a convex lens is thick in its middle and thin at the periphery in other words a lens which bulges out in the middle is a convex lens a light beam converges on passing through such a lens so it is called as a converging lens. so the converging so this is convex so convex will always have a bulging part so if it is having a bulging part both the side bulging part like this then it's a convex lens okay so it has got a thicker middle and thinner periphery the peripheries are thinner and this is thicker so that's why this is how you identify a convex lens is if the lens is such that it is thicker from the center and tapered out at the edges then it is called as a convex lens also called as a converging lens because the light rays which are passing through this they converge at a point so it is in that if it is taking over here then these lights are going to converge at a point so because of this point the light ray is converging at this particular point therefore this lens is called as a converging lens or a convex lens convex lens or converging lens now there could be three kinds of the convex lenses one is this one which is a biconvex so this is nothing but a biconvex lens other one could be such that 
it has got one end flat and other end as bulging. So if this is the case, this is called as a plano convex. Okay, the plano convex. And the third one is one side is bulging out, the other side is dipping inside. So here, this is bulging out and this is coming inside. So this is called as a concavo convex. If both sides convex, biconvex, one side plane, other side convex, plano convex, one side concave, other con this is concave and this is convex, then it is concavo convex. Right? So a biconvex lens has both the surfaces. So a convex lens has got three types biconvex or double convex or equiconvex, plano convex and concavo convex. The shape of different kind of convex lenses are shown in the figure over here. A biconvex lens has both its surfaces convex. A plano has one surface plane and the other surface convex, while the concavo convex has, has one surface convex and the other surface as a concave, such that it is thicker in the middle as compared to its periphery. So here you can see, here it is thicker in the middle and compared to its periphery, it is thicker in the middle. Why did we see this is when we know about the concave lens, because there could be someone some which is called a convexo concave. So you should not get confused between the two. So here, the one in which the, the edges are tapered down or thinner at the edges and thicker at the center is a convex, that is concave or convex. Now comes the concave or diverging lenses. So diverging lenses, why we are di diverging lenses? Because if you take this particular kind of lens, so if this is a lens over here, then the rays of light which are coming from this particular end, they will be such that they are, from here they go diverge out. Okay, they are diverging such that they seem to meet at a point over here. But they are diverging. So this is, they are going away from each other. That's why they are called as a concave lens or a diverging lens. Again, the three types. This is biconcave. Okay, biconcave. The other one would be obviously plano concave. So in a plano concave, it would be like this. And then it is convex or concave, so it will be like this. Okay, so this is plano concave, this is convexo concave. So here the basic thing what you can see is that in a concave lens, the center is thinner and the periphery is broader. See, broader, thinner, broader. Broader, thinner, broader. Yeah, it has to be slightly thinner, but I just drawn it this way. So, this is a biconcave, planar concave, convexo concave, right? So, a concave lens is thick at its periphery and thin in middle. In other words, a lens which is bent inwards in the middle, it is the concave lens. So, when it is bent in the middle, it is bent in the middle side, so that will be concave lens. Such a concave lens <laughs> diverges the light rays incident on it, so it is called as a diverging lens. A, bi a convex lens may be of the following three kinds. Biconvex or double convex or the equiconcave, sorry, concave, biconcave, double concave or equiconcave, plano concave, plane and concave or convexo concave. Figure shows the types of the kinds of the concave lenses over here. A biconcave lens has both its surfaces concave 
A plano concave lens has one of its surface plane and the other surface concave, while a convexo concave has one surface concave and the other surface convex, such that it is thinner in the middle and as compared to its periphery. So it will be thinner in the middle as compared to its periphery. So this should be something like this. Okay, thinner in the middle and as compared to its periphery. So note, both the concave or convex and the convex or concave lenses have one surface convex and other surface concave, but they differ in their shape and action. A concave or convex action on a light beam, a convex, a concave or convex lens is thicker in the middle and has a converging action on the light beam, while the concave, convex or concave is thinner in the middle and has a diverging action on the light beam. So here we can see that this also has got one concave and one convex. This also has got one concave and convex, but they differ in their properties. What is the difference is the action wise, this is going to be a, a converging kind of a lens. Here, whatever ray lights are falling on it, they are converging at a point. Whereas in this case, whatever ray of light is falling on it, it is going to diverge. So this is a diverging kind and this is a converging kind. No doubt, both of them has got one convex and one concave part. But you can always see that this one has very thin periphery and thicker middle. Whereas this has got a thicker periphery and thinner middle. So that's the difference between the two types of lenses. Now let us understand that uh, how does the lens uh, is going to be uh, performing, uh, how does how do we get to know that it is giving you a diverging, why is it giving you diverging or why it is giving you the converging kind of a thing. So we just understand the basic uh, way the lens is going to refract the lights. So accordingly what we will do is that we are going to convert one concave and the convex lenses into we will split them into small small pieces over here. So what we are going to do is suppose I have got this convex lens and I have got this as a concave lens. If this particular lens is seen in a proper manner, you can easily make out that this particular part is almost triangular, considering to be a prism. This much part is almost like a rectangle and this is again a triangle. So you can see that this is a glass slab, these are the two prisms. Now we very well know that when we are having any particular ray of light coming on the prism, so we know that if the ray of light is coming like this, okay, then it is going to be refracted towards the base. So it is going to go towards the base like this and then again get refracted and it's going to go like this. If I'm going to see about the glass lamp, if it is perpendicular, it will just go straight like this without any refraction. It's just going to go straight. Whereas here also the same thing what happens over here will happen here. So if there is a ray of light here, it will go towards the uh, base and then it will slightly deviate and it will go like this. So you can see that because the rays of light which are parallel to this place are converging at this particular point. What is converging? Meeting at this particular point, intersection. There is a point of intersection between all the lines coming over here. So that's why we see that because of this formation of the uh, lens in the form of two prism and one glass lamp in this way, you can see the ray of light which is coming over here is going to converge like this. So that's why the convex lenses are converging kind because of this particular fundamental principle. We are not doing anything different over here. We are just using the principles of the prism. In the principal prism, we know that if it comes here, it is going to go down, down like this. Why? Because you can even, okay, if you want to uh, confirm this thing again, like, let's see, this is the line. So we have this as the normal. So here it is going to go from a rarer medium to denser medium because it go from rarer medium to denser medium. So rarer to denser, denser will be towards the normal. So rarer to denser towards the normal. So instead of going, it will go towards the normal. Again over here, what will happen? This is the 
normal. So if this is the normal, then when it is going from tensor to red, it is going to away from the normal. So it goes like this. So we are just using the same particular principle that how the lens is going, uh, how the uh, prism is going to deviate the light, or we know that any particular surface is when it's go when the light passes from the rarer to denser, it is going to go towards the normal, and denser to rarer, it will go away from the normal. So that principle is the one which is we are using here. We are not using anything new over here. There is no way it can go upwards. The, the light will never go upwards. It will always fall this way. That's why here it is going to be a converging. So that's why we say that this particular is a convex, which is a converging. Okay, converging kind of a lens because the ray of light are meeting at a point, converging at a point over here. Now let's see what happens over here. What happens here is that you are going to have the prism in this manner that this is one prism which is like this. There is a glass slab which is over here and there is another prism which is over here. So this way you have got two prism which are inverted. Now you can consider this way, the base is this way, here. it is on the base. So obviously when you are seeing the ray of light, ray of light will be falling like this one two and three light over here. So this is going to go towards the base in the same manner as what this goes, it goes towards the base. So here also it goes towards the base. So it goes towards the base and then deviates out like this. This would go straight and this will again deviate towards the base and go like this. So you can see that in this case also there is a deviation and they will find that if you bring this backwards, they are going to intersect at the same point. Okay, so this is the direction in which the rays are going to go, but they can be considered to be coming from a point with behind this particular lens. Hence, you can see that they are all diverging, the rays are diverging. So that's why we say that concave, concave lens or it is diverging lens. Okay, got the meaning of why it is called diverging and why it is called converging. So we see over here that, uh, okay, I'll just, we'll just go through this thing. If at all anything is uh, written in a different manner, but it's the same thing as such. We are at the refraction uh, of light through a prism. A refraction of light through a lens can be understood by a simple way by considering a lens as being made up of set of prism as shown in figure 5.3. To make it simple, further simple, the prism is uh, in the center position of the lens, uh, may be treated as a rectangular slab and the lens can be considered as being made up of rectangular slab as the center and one prism on either side as shown. So as I told you, the rectangular prism at the center and two prism on either side of the rectangular prism on both, on both the conditions. A convex lens has an upper part as a prism with its base downwards and its, its lower part uh, of the prism has its base upwards as shown. On the other hand, a concave lens is a, its upper part as a prism <coughs> with its base upwards and its lower part with the base downwards. Convergent action of the convex lens. So let us consider refraction of parallel rays of light A, B and C incident on the prism respectively in the upper center and lower part of the convex lens. We know the ray of light incident on the prism on refra refraction through it bends towards the base of the prism. Therefore, the prism in the upper part of the convex lens bends the incident ray A downwards, while the prism in the lower part of the convex lens bends the incident ray C upwards. The central part, which is parallel side glass layer, passes the B normally incident on it undeviated. Thus, the set of prism forming a convex lens converges the parallel rays of light point F. Therefore, a convex lens has a converging action on the incident light ray. So this is what they are saying, that three rays which are coming here, this is going towards the base, this is going straight, this is going towards the base again. So they are converging at a point, that's why the convex lens are called as a converging lens. Divergent action, the prism in the upper part of the convex ray bends the incident ray upwards. Uh, towards the base while the prism in the lower part of the convex lens, concave lens bends the incident ray C downwards towards its base. 
The central part, which is parallel side glass slab, passes the normally incident ray B undivided. Thus, the set of prism forming the concave lens diverges the parallel lines rays as if they are coming from a common point F situated on the sides of the rays incident on the lens. Therefore, a concave lens has a diverging action as it's so you can see that this is going to go towards the base on the upper side. This is also going to go towards a base that is at the downwards over here. This goes straight. So it is assumed, it will, we can feel it that it is coming from this point F over here. This is the point F through which the lines are deviated out. So that's why we call it as a diverging action of the lens. So that was about the uh, reason for the divergence and convergence of the lenses. That is why is the convex lens converging type and why is the concave lens diverging type. Now we come to the part where we need to understand some basic terminologies which are going to be used for the, for the uh, lens. So those ones are dependent on the structure of that particular lens. So the structure of the lens is going to give you certain terminologies, some terms. So first of all, let us understand this way that how is the lens made. So if you have got two spheres and they are intersecting like this, then this part over here, this over here, I'll just take it separate. So this over here forms the convex lens. Okay, this is the convex lens. This over here, this part is the convex part. And similarly, if I have got two, two spheres over here, such that they are slightly apart like this, then this part over here, that is the part over here, if I take this part over here, then this part is nothing but the concave lens. So this is the concave lens and this is the convex lens. So this is a concave, this is a convex. Now you can see that there are the things what we are going to learn is first is the center of curvature. So this side over here has this spear which has got this as the center and this is the another center over here, right? There is a center C1 and C2. This is for, for this part that is C2 and for this part is C1. Over here, this part over here will be this one C1 and over here will be C2, okay, C1 and C2 accordingly this way. So <clears throat> C1 and C2 are the center of curvature of the sphere of which this particular lens is a part. So that's why we define center of curvature as the center of the sphere whose part is a lens surface is called as the center of curvature of the surface of that lens. Okay, center of the sphere of which this particular part is, this particular lens is a part, is called as the center of curvature of that particular lens. So that is why we have got two centers over here, always because it has got two curvatures. So one on this side, one this one in the first circle. But over A side way is C2 and because this is the front part, so this is C1, so that C1, C1, A circle ka C1 or A part ka C2. Here both are separate, so this is C1 and this is C2. Okay, so these two are the center of curvature. The next one is radius of curvature. Obviously, the distance between the center, so distance from here to here or the distance from here to here, this is the radius of curvature. So this is the radius of curvature over here, this will be the radius of curvature, this is R and this over here is R. So these are the radius of curvature, that is the radius of the sphere of which the lens is a part is called as the radius of curvature. So the radius of the sphere whose part of the is the lens surface is called as the radius of curvature. So here you can see that both the things are uh, going to be radius. Now if this circle and this circle has got equal radius, 
then it will be forming a biconvex or a equiconvex or concave lens so if we have the equiconvex or equiconcave then the radius over here and radius over here will be same so here i have shown it differently but you can have where both of them could be same so in that case if it is a equiconvex or a equiconcave lens then the radius of both the circles both the spheres will be same the third one we see is the principal axis that is the line joining the two centers. So the line joining the two centers that is C1 to C2 ka jo line hai. This particular line is called as a principal axis. So this over here is the principal axis. So this complete line over here is the principal axis. Okay. C, C dash, C, C1, C2 is the principal axis. It is a line joining the center of curvature of the two surfaces of the lens. So the line joining the center of the two curvatures is uh, two centers of uh, the curvature is called as the now the next is optical center optical center it is a point on the principal axis optical center will be a point on the principal axis that will be over here so this is optical center over here this will be the optical center okay that is the line on the principal axis such that a ray of light passing through this point emerges parallel to its direction of incidence or because uh, see it is going to be this way that whenever it passing through the optical center it is going to be such that it will be uh, we consider it this way that whenever any ray of light is passing through the optical center it will go undeviated okay because in case see normally what happens when you are taking a lens the lens we will see first if it comes from here there will be a refraction and then there will be another refraction and then it will go like this so instead of doing like this, what they do is that they show this as a single line going from here to here. Okay, they are not showing the two-step process of the divergence. The two-step process of divergence is not shown. Okay, instead of that, we are just taking a single step divergence. So that's why. So if you see the optical center, the optical center is over here. So in the optical center, the ray of light will go undeviated. There won't be any deviation at all. So we are not talking about this. So if the ray of light is such that it passing through optical center, it will go undeviated. So generally in a thin, because it is a thin lens, so there will be a very le less amount of lateral displacement in the, in case of a thing and due to the very less amount of lateral, reflection, uh, uh, lateral displacement, that's why we consider it to be as negligible and consider that the ray of light is passing straight. So that's why we see that the ray of light directed towards the optical center in a thin lens can be considered to pass through a lens undeviated and undisplaced. That's why we define optical center as optical center of a thin lens is a point on the principal axis of a lens such that a ray of light directed towards it passes undeviated through it. So that is the, the, uh, the optical center that it is that particular point on the principal axis or for thin lens such that a ray of light passing through that will go undeviated and undisplaced. So that is how we are defining the optical center as a point where point is not refraction. Then we see the principal foci, so the light ray when enters the lens uh, from either side, therefore lens has to have two principal foci, one on either side of the lens, this is known as the first focal and the second focal, so when the ray of light is going to pass through, so if we see this particular thing, so here, if this is the lens and this is the lens, So you can see that this is the principal axis, this is the optical center, this is the optical center over here, this is over here, okay. Now it is seen that the ray of light are going to be uh, in case of a con it is going to pass through. So here if they are if from here if they are taking some rays of light like this, they are going to become from here they are going to become parallel to principal axis. Okay, or in this case, from here, if they are going like this, okay, they, they go like this, and they are going to uh, be, or uh, second, one sec, one sec, this is wrong. So we can see if the ray of light are coming from here outside, okay, and they will become parallel to principal axis, 
such that this could have been meeting at this particular point. So this is your F1. So this is the point F1. So there is a first focal length and the second focal length. And they will be different for convex and concave. So the, they will be for focal length, you will be having four definitions. One is first, print, first focal length, a uh, first focal point, uh, second focal point, and both in convex and concave. For a convex lens, the first focal length is a point F1 on the principal axis of the lens, such that the ray of light coming from it after refraction to the lens become parallel to the principal axis. So it is this one that is coming from the first focal length, the point from where the ray of light which is coming on the lens will after refraction become parallel to the principal axis. Okay, that is the first focal length. For a focal length, uh, first focal length in is point F1 for a concave lens is on the point on the principal axis of the lens such that the incident rays of light appearing to meet at this point after reflection from the lens become parallel to the principal axis. So these are the lines which appear to be meeting at this particular point after refraction become parallel to the principal axis. So this is coming like this and they are going to become parallel to principal axis. This was coming like this and they have become parallel to the principal axis. So this is what is the first focal length. Similarly, the second focal length. What is second focal length? Agar se parallel lines hai, if there are two parallel lines coming here and they are intersecting at a point over here, then this is your F2. Similarly, agar pe do parallel lines hai, and they are going to diverge like this and they are going to feel to meet at this particular point, then this is your F2. Okay, so parallel initially and diverging meeting at a point is F2. Parallel initially converging and meeting at a point is F2 of convex. So for a convex lens, the second focal point is of point F2 on the principal axis of the lens such that the ray of light incident parallel to the principal axis after reflection from the lens pass through it. So that's it. That the F2 is the point through which the ray of light is going to pass through after reflection. This point is on the principal axis. Similarly, for concave lens, the lens uh, second focal length is the point F2 on the principal axis of the lens such that the ray of light incident parallel to the principal axis after reflection appear, after reflection from the lens appear to diverge to be diverging from this particular point on the principal axis. So that is the F2 that is second focal point. Accordingly, there will be a focal plane also. This complete thing, this complete line is a focal plane. This so this is the focal plane. This line is a focal plane. This is a focal plane. There's another focal plane. There's another focal plane. All these are focal planes. The plane normal to the principal axis passing through the focus is called as a focal plane. So again, there are two focal planes. First focal plane, the plane passing through the first focal point normal to the principal axis is the first focal plane. And second, the plane passing to the second focal plane and normal to the principal axis is called as the second focal plane. Obviously, there will be also one more thing and that is the focal length. The focal length will be distance from O to this part. So from year to year or from year to year and from year to year. This is the focal length. So that is F, this is the focal length. This is the second focal length. This is first focal length. This is F2. This is F1. So accordingly we see the mean, the distance of the focus or the focal point from the optical center of the lens is called as the focal length. And there are two focal lengths, fo first focal length, the distance between the optical center and the lens of the lens to the first focal point F1 is called as the first focal length F1 and the distance between the focal cent uh, fo optical center O of the lens to the second focal point F2 is called as the second focal length F2. Note if the medium of on both sides a lens is same, its focal, if first and the focal, uh, second focal length are equal. So if you have an uh, equi uh, concave or equi convex lens, then and you have got same medium on both sides of the lens, then you will find that the focal length in both the cases will be the same. So F1 will be equal to F2 if the medium on both sides is the same. Usually when we say focus, we mean the second focal point 
Hence, the focal length of the lens implies the second focal length of the lens. Because normally you are going to have an image on the other side. So this is the ray, which is the incident rays. The image is always found over here. So that's why in case of a convex lens, you are going to take uh, this as the focal length, main f2 as the main focus, and over here f2 as the main focus. So there, because it is after refraction, what is going to get? So that's why we consider that the second focal length to be the focus of the lens. A convex lens has a real focus because the parallel line incident on the convex after refraction actually pass through that point while the, in a concave lens the focus is virtual because the parallel line incident uh, out on the concave lens after refraction do not actually pass through it but they appear to be uh, diverging from that point. So here you can see the dotted lines that means this one F2 is a virtual kind of a focal length or a focal point. Whereas here it is a real. Why real? Because the light rays are actually intersecting at that particular point. Only a beam of light incident parallel to the principal axis converge on the point F2 on the, uh, on the principal axis after reflection through the convex lens. If the beams of light are uh, incident obliquely, the rays are not parallel to the principal axis. It does not converge at the F2, but it converges on the focal plane. So if the rays are uh, something like this that if the rays are going to be not the parallel to the principal axis but they are the principal axis but these are coming like this they are coming like this so this is the center so you're coming like this then they are going to converge at a point and their converging will be if this is the focus so it will be on the focal plane so this will be meeting over here so that is why it is called as the converging on the focal plane this is the focal plane over here Right, but converging at a point B, the same thing also happens in case of a concave uh, kind of a thing. So, according we have the difference between the convex and the convex lens. Concave, it is thick in the middle and thin at the periphery. Concave, it is uh, thin at the middle and thick at the periphery. Convex, it converges the light ray, incident ray uh, towards the principal axis. Concave, diverges the incident ray away from the principal axis. Concavex has a real focus, concave has a virtual focus. And uh, finally is uh, deflection of a light through an equiconvex lens and an equiconcave lens. So uh, they have just given you this particular figure but you have to see that it is just given that it is going to diffract twice. So this ray first gets diffracted here and then it refracted here. But you will consider it as a straight line and you are not going to take it as separate lines because you know, just for the sake of convenience. So for ray diagram, we shall consider the lens to be thin and for simplicity, we shall not show the bending of the ray of light at each of the two surfaces of the lens separately, but we shall show the net bending at the straight vertical line passing to the optical center towards the center in the uh, uh, convex lens or away from the center position in the concave lens. So what we are going to do is that whenever we are showing any kind of refraction we are just going to show like this this is the line, line with the optical center so even if the lens is over here we are just going to take it like this from here and then because it is converging so it is going to come like this or if it is like this then it is going to go like this or it is going to be uh, if it is a concave so in the case of a concave you know that it is going to diverge so it will be like this this is the center part so even if this is the lens it has no meaning of the lens it will be if the ray of light is going to go like uh, like this it is going to from this point we are going to show it like this so at this point over here it is going to go like this so that is what, what, how we are going to show we are not going to show the refraction which is taking place within that particular lens so that is what we see over here. So that was about the first explanation of the chapter about the different kinds of lenses and how the refraction takes place in the lenses. Uh, quite an easy part. Uh, in fact, nothing to learn over here except for the terminologies which are there. That is the center of curvature and the radius of curvature and optical center and fo focal length and fo uh, focal plane and all the, that is the only thing which is important. Otherwise, uh, nothing important in this particular part. Now we move on to the next part of the chapter that is formation of the image by the lens in the next video.